even after 25 years of its introduction to consumer market, infrared communication is still very relevant in recent days. Whether it's your 55-inch 4K television or your car sound system, everything needs an IR remote controller to respond to your commands. There are many technologies available in the market, the Bluetooth, RF or even Wi-Fi. But we have stuck to infrared communication for so long that has some very solid reasons behind it. First of all, they are the cheapest solution. They cost literally cents. Apart from that, they are reliable. And most importantly, the ease of use is that what makes it apart from others. Also, this is a not visible in naked eye. That's why it was introduced in first place. And don't overlook the low power consumption that it takes compared to RA for Bluetooth remote. So in today's video, let's make a project by which we can control our home appliances using these IR remotes. Also, I'll be implementing a timer function to switch on and off devices without our direct involvement. Starting with the block diagram, then coding, circuit diagram and to the final PCB designing. I'll be guiding you through the whole process in detail. And talking about PCBs, I have used JLC PCBs PCB making services to get the prototype boards for this project who is also the sponsor for this video so big thumbs up to JLC PCB. Their ridiculously low prices and quick build time is what that makes it special. 10 PCBs is just for $2 it's not something you're gonna get everywhere. So stay tuned with me to know more about JLC PCB and their ordering process. Uh, that's it in this part of the video. Let's roll the intro now and start being creative. First of all, I started with drawing the most probable block diagram for this project. Beginning with a power supply module that will take around 9 to 12 volt DC input and will produce a regulated 5 volt output to power the circuit. And then there will be a microcontroller that will be the brain of the system. I will be using an Arduino but this will be a DIY one not Arduino Uno or Nano. Uh, I will talk about it later on. And then there will be a higher receiver that will receive the signal and will send it to the Arduino for processing. Uh, 2 cross 7 segment display will be interfaced with the microcontroller to give us some visual information. Effort from the power LED, there will be also a separate LED that will be used to show us the status of the timer. At last, two relay driver boards will be added which will be controlled by two Arduino digital pins. And this is the basic block diagram for this project that I will be using. Now coming back to the DIY Arduino what I was showing earlier is that I'll be only using the IC that is the Atmega 28 p what we can find on most of the Arduino boards and I'll be using that IC on my PCB with some more passive component that it requires to run and the coding will be done on Arduino IDE everything will be same just any other project but at the last moment I'll be removing the pre-programmed IC and I'll be placing it on my PCB do watch this video of mine about build your own Arduino to know more about how to make DIY Arduinos at home. It's time to finalize the components required to make this project. Also I'll be attaching the complete BOM in a description box. So take a look if you require it. Then I used EasyEDA and drew the complete circuit diagram with proper name and wiring. EasyEDA is a great tool for drawing this kind of big circuits. It makes life a lot easier afterwards. I am using this portal for long time and will recommend it to everyone without hesitation. The circuit diagram that I have drawn is given in the description box also in a PDF doc. You can download it and take a look. Coming back to the circuit, here is the power supply that I was talking about with the 7805 regulator and some bypass caps. The big Atmega 1028P IC is there in the middle with the reset switch, the passive components like caps or crystal oscillators and other things. 
this is the seven segment display that this interface with the Arduino with the digital pin two to seven. One eight three eight IR receiver is connected to the Arduino via the IR input netboard. Then there is the last two relay there that is relay one and relay two. Those with the proper driver circuits are connected with the digital pin twelve and thirteen of the Arduino. You can refer to this video of mine to know how to design a relay driver board for Arduino. And once the design is complete, save it and export the BUM for future references. Now it's time to make a breadboard prototype and check whether everything works or not. For this prototype, we are using a full size Arduino Uno. But before proceeding, we need to work on the coding first. Uh, first, you need to check the hex code that your IR remotes transmit. To do that, you need the Arduino library named IR Remote. The library link is in the description. You can download the library and install it to your ID. And then open the IRF demo example sketch and upload the code to your Arduino. Open serial monitor and start pressing the remote buttons one at a time. You will see the corresponding hex values in the serial monitor. What I have done that I have copied all those codes in a word file for future references. But you can also just note down the hex code of those buttons that you are intending to use in this project. After you are done with this, it's time to construct the main program. So this is the final code that I came up with after scratching my head for 5 hours and hundreds of trial and error. Uh, you need these three libraries for proper compilation. All those libraries are given in the description box. Install it first, otherwise it will throw an error to you. Uh, also keep in mind that I have used both the timer function and the interrupt function that Arduino offers us. But most of the time we don't utilize it because it increases the complexity of a code. But for this project we needed it and I have implemented those in the code. And now if I start explaining this code each line it will be hour long video that will not be very interesting. So what I will do that in the final code that I will be uploading I will be commenting each function and each line so that you can understand while going through the code in your desktop. After this, use this code in your breadboard prototype and check if it is working or not. Once it is done, you are unhappy with it, then go back to EZDA and convert the circuit to PCB. Be patient with the PCB designing because a small mistake here can ruin your whole PCB package. I will be recommending to route your path yourself. Don't use the auto router there. It will be much more efficient if you do it by yourself. Stay away from 90 degree curves and use copper area as ground. It is always a good practice. Also, you can check the 3D model of your PCBs from there. It is always handy tool, I guess. Uh, check multiple times before generating the Garber file. Once you are 100% sure, click on the make Garber file. From there, you can directly order these boards via JLC PCB. Upload the Garber file, select proper specification. Uh, mainly, you don't need to change anything in this section, keep it as it is. Uh, they are good enough settings to start with, but you can also see the price that is shown as $2 for for 10 PCBs. This is what I was talking about earlier. It's unbelievably cheap and the build time of only 24 hours is always impressive hands down. So check out and place your order. You can get this PCB is delivered to your door in less than 5 days I guess because I live in India and I received those package in 3 days via DHL. By the way you can always track the production as well as the shipping right from your account page. So this is how I received the package from DHL. Inside that I had a box with the GLC PCB printed on top. The packaging is top notch no doubt. Also I got this pen maybe a present I guess. Uh, further opening the box I got the 10 PCBs that I ordered. At first impression it looks good enough but let's give it a closer look. Now you can see the solder mask, the cell screen and the, the solder paste. All those things are very impressive and it looks good. You can take a closer look at these PCBs in many angles. I'll be giving you the videos here on the screen. But the most important part is there are no errors in the final product. There should not be any because the automated machines there checks their PCBs every time at the time of production. And it's quite impossible to mess things up if your design has no flaw. It's time to solder the components in, gather all those components with proper quantities as described in the BOM. I have a very ordinary soldering iron, not any special type of soldering station or whatever those are. But that should not be a problem here. Now start soldering and let's see if it comes out good or not.
the soldering is done actually i have made two of this board the first one i built just to check if everything is okay or not once i'm satisfied with i made a second one on camera what you just saw now power up the board with a DC supply of 9 to 12 volt uh, switch on the circuit using the slider the power led should be on by now now take the remote and test if all the functions that i said earlier is working or not here you can see I opened the base of a table lamp that was lying around in my table and I unscrewed the wires from the switch in it. And again I am warning you, you don't need to do this if you are not sure, don't do this please because it can harm you seriously. If possible ask an electrician to do this part of the job. Now take the final PCB and check which side of the delay terminal is normally open with the common one. You can use a continuity tester for it. Loosen the screws of those terminals by a screwdriver and insert the exposed part of the wires in the terminals one by one and tighten up the screws. Again check if those terminals are isolated, it should be. If it is not then there might be some copper wires touching each other. Clear that and recheck till if you are not getting those isolations properly. Once it is done, plug in your AC appliances to wall socket and power it up. And once the main power is on, don't touch the screw terminals. Even after powering up the FC appliances, there should not be any change in the status because the PCB is off. Now power up the PCB and point the remote towards it and press the required button. I'll be using press I'll be pressing the button 2 because I have connected the lamp to the relay 2 here. So on pressing button 2, you can see the LED lamp is getting on and also check the timer function with it here you can see all those things are working as it was intended to do hey guys i just wanted to give you the glimpse of the final result so here is a small circuit that i have made to show you the output i have connected two led lamp this is the first one this is broken sorry for that this is the second led lamp i have connected both of those with those two relay you can see and let me power on the first LED using the remote. The 7 segment display here should light up as L1 on. Yeah, it works. Now let's power up the second one. Yeah, it works also. Also, you can power off both of those using the same buttons. The writing is showing accordingly. Let's power on the LED 1 using a timer. Now let's put a timer of around 15 minutes here and start the timer by pressing the OK button. Yeah, the timer has started and let's look at the current time now. Uh, the current time is 9.23, I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, so let's come back at 9.38 and let's see what happens then. So the time is currently 9.36 any time now the LED will turn on and the relay will toggle it's 9.37 so the time has reached to 9.38 and we have started the timer at 9.23 yeah done so after 15 minutes as we give the input to the PCB the LED one has turned on so this is the final product this will be the final result of this project now back to the video and complete the rest of it so we have successfully completed this project hereby now we can control any home appliances with our ir remotes so these type of projects can come very handy in some situations maybe you are going out of home and you want your room heater to be off after five minutes you go out in those types of situation i'm giving a hypothetical situation that not but might not be the case in actual but i'm give, saying that this type of project can give you a pretty handy tool to use in your daily life uh, hope you have liked this project if you have watched this till now then you might have learned something new if yes then please do like this video share it with your friends project mates and your colleagues maybe and don't forget to subscribe to this channel it's free and it motivates us to more and more work on this project and come up with such videos for you uh, if you have any sort of doubt don't hesitate to comment down below in the comment section uh, throw us your queries i will be more than happy to help you look at the description box i'll be giving many docs and the instructables and everything will be there take a look 
and then contact us if you want any help or any recommendation i'll be pretty much happy to help you there uh, thanks again for watching hope to see you in our next video till then bye and take care